here. Um, hi, I know you don't normally see my face and I am not prepared for this because I am in a hot, sweaty kitchen and I am canning tomatoes today. Uh, we have about 75 pounds of tomatoes that I have to process and get in jars and put up. Um, I did 25 pounds two days ago and I'm out of practice. It was a lot of work. It took me all day. And yesterday was just a really busy day. It was a bad day. Um, so here I am today trying to get the rest of the 50 pounds done. So I'm going to show you a little bit about my process and then I'm going to tell you about no, how canning and dehydrating are perfect for no waste living. Dave and I, we do our best. Like we won't buy plastic bags, like Ziploc bags. We um, will buy, you know, glass, Pyrex, as opposed to like disposable Tupperware that you get tired of seeing, you lose the lids to, and you throw away. Well, we'll do our best. We don't use cling wrap. Um, we don't use foil unless we absolutely have to, and then even then we'll wash it and recycle it. Um, but um, what we're doing here with the tomatoes and with um, apples, most of the things from our garden, our zucchini, our cabbage, our cucumbers, all of the fruits that we were able to grow um, go in canning jars. And that helps us a lot because when we grew it here, um, so there's no transporting back and forth internationally, um, we... Um, don't have packaging to throw away because it all goes into jars and it didn't come from packaging because it came from our backyard. So um, I'm sweating my buns off. <laughs> Let me um, get to what I'm doing here. So here we have, I still have two sinkfuls of tomatoes and then this bowl here. Um, I have a lot to go. I'm not getting got, gotten very far yet. So um, I keep doing this extreme close up. Ah! Um, so for the first step is you wash them in the sink with just a splash of vinegar um, totally safe to go down the sink. Um, if we had the setup to, some people do that gray water thing where you can adjust and then it goes into like a rain barrel and then you can water your garden, like everything from like bath water to dish, dishwashing, all that stuff. We don't do that because um, we just don't have the setup for it. But if we wanted to, we could scoop that out into a rain, you know, a watering can and go water our garden, but we're not, I don't have time for that. So, um, after we've washed them, we've let them soak, we rub the dirt off, we boil them. Uh, I let the water boil, I let them sit for about a minute once the water gets to boiling. And you want to do that because with canning, it's, it's really a science. You need to sterilize everything. Um, you need to sterilize everything and you need to make sure that you follow the recipe to the letter. If you're a cook who can't follow a recipe to the letter, then don't do it because you need a recipe that's been um, studied in a lab. Seriously, I'm not kidding. You can get botulism and die. Um, and I did read in my, one of my first canning jars um, or canning book recipes, uh, the only way to hurt somebody with jam is if you throw the jar at them, but I'm not gonna risk it. I'm not gonna make anybody sick or give anybody anything that has something growing in it that's not supposed to be there. So I make sure that I follow every rule to the letter. So I start by boiling the tomatoes, that sterilizes them, but then it also cracks the peel, which makes them easier to, you know, skin. So let me show you. So then after you boil them for that minute, um, you then drop them in a pot of ice cold water. And then as you can see here, the peel, boom, comes right off. It's super easy. From there, then I stick it in the roasting oven, which I'm not, I got a long way to go. I got about 30 tomatoes in there. I got about 200 to go. So I need to talk faster. So from there um, in the roaster, you cook it down, um, get most of the moisture out, and then you can do a few things. Um, so we like to can tomato sauce, salsa, bruschetta, and then I like to ladle off the juice so that that's not being wasted either. And the juice, we don't drink tomato juice, but you could if you did. And, um, but we save it for like adding it to stew and soup and stuff like that. So, um, so that's one way that your food's not being wasted. Using it in a m million different ways. Like you don't want all that juice in your, um, in your sauce. You don't want runny sauce. You don't want runny salsa. You don't want runny bruschetta. So you just, take it off let me show you a jar of it here let me turn on the light our fancy new pantry and our light um and then you can this and then you have 
very pretty tomato juice. I put some basil, some thyme, and a bay leaf in here. And it's a um, nice addition to some soup. You put some beef bouillon in here, some chicken bouillon, and then you have a base for a stew. You put some vegetables in there, and you're good to go. So that way none of the tomatoes are being wasted, except there's this bowl of skins here. Remember I said you peel the skins because people don't digest them very well. These you can throw in your food dehydrator, if you have one. Um, and when they're nice and crunchy and dry, you put them in your food processor, you grind them up, and then you turn them into a powder that you can also add to your food while you're cooking. So you legitimately waste no part of the tomato except for like the leaves, which can be composted. Um, that's that. So food dehydrating is super simple. It kind of goes like with canning. Um, it's a good way to store food for a very, very long time. Um, I have some celery in there cooking. Um, and then you just stick it in a airtight jar. You make sure all the liquid is out. Um, these tomatoes are ready to go. You make sure that you take all of the liquid out and then um, you let the condensation cool, cool off and stuff and then um, it's good for like up to two years if you store it correctly. Uh, so the point of this is if any of you are interested in learning to can or to dehydrate your food, a very kind and loving and lovely woman um, taught me how to do it. She's also the woman that taught me how to sew and got me started on a lot of the things that I know how to do. And she had this philosophy in the costume, costume shop, each one teach one. And I believe it's an African philosophy of education where if you're going to learn something from somebody, then before you learn something else, you have to share the knowledge that was shared with you. So um, I have no problem teaching people new things. So if you are a friend of mine, uh, feel free to call me, text me, send me a message. If you're somebody who just happens to fall upon this video because this is a new YouTube situation that's happening, um, send me a, a comment or send me a message or whatever, and I would be glad to show you some good links for beginners. I just lost my spoon. It fell, it fell in there. I'm not going in after it. <laughs> um, so, so that's that. I, I do hope that you'll consider learning a new skill. Um, with all the weirdness going on in the world right now, it's a good habit to have because you never know what's going to happen. Not to sound like a crazy prepper, but, you know, it's already happened once. So it's a, it's a good skill to have. I like to think that um, if anything ever were to happen, I'm going to be on everybody's team because I can grow food, I can can food, I can dehydrate and preserve food, I can sew you clothes. I can, uh, I can, I can, I can do, I can do everything but math and music. Basically, don't ask me to do those things. Uh, I know some people who can help us with that, but don't ask me to do those other things. All right. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye.